Hi everybody. Um, this is a very, very um, serious video. I was kind of contemplating if I wanted to do it. But I know I did a video about Hurricane Sandy. And this situation is so devastating that um, why would I not speak about it? Uh, most of you guys know, or if you don't know, uh, yesterday, I'm not sure what time it happened, I believe it was in the morning in um, Newton, Connecticut. Newton, Connecticut, um, there was a shooting at an elementary school. A 20-year-old guy, I believe they said he was 20 years old, uh, went to an elementary school and killed 18 18 about 18 to 20 uh, children from the ages of 5 to 10 as well as six adults um, I'm not sure how many were injured um, and um, it's like how do you How do you even um, try to bring words of comfort and encouragement when something like that happens? There is no rational reason whatsoever for somebody to do such a horrific, hateful thing. Killing in general is just terrible. But to innocent beautiful children um, it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense at all um, I don't even want to know the reasoning all I know is that um, his mother worked at the school and he shot his mother at their home and then he went to the school and killed about what 18 to 20 kids as well as six adults and then he killed himself which was a very cowardice thing to do um the only thing I can do today I'm like fasting and praying honestly I have my own situations going on where I really need to draw closer to the Lord but then when this happened I really felt in my heart that I need to fast and pray and get in the word because I can't even I can't even think of the words honestly except for giving you guys scriptures and I have some scriptures written down that I went and searched my Bible to try to bring words of encouragement but um my condolences are to those who lost their children I am praying for you guys I really am praying for you guys. Um, I have a 12-year-old brother, and I can't even imagine if that were to happen to him and his at his school and his friends that we know in the neighborhood that come over the house. And situations like this is where we really need to cherish the time that we have with our loved ones. Um, really thanking God for the fact that we have children and um, little nieces and nephews and cousins and brothers and sisters and just family in general. Um, we really need to cherish that because tomorrow is not promised to us. It is clear that this world is perishing all around us. Um, it's just one incident after another, after another, after another. And all you can do in order to have any type of peace of mind, though the earth is going through so much mess, is have Christ Jesus, is have the Lord and the Holy Spirit will bring comfort and peace of mind. Um... How can we do it without God? I have no idea. I have no idea how we do it without the Lord because the Lord is the only one who is going to be able to keep us at peace though so much stuff is going on. 
this this is truly the work of the enemy. I mean, when you think about this person who did this, I think some people don't think about the fact that obviously this individual needed help mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Yes, this is about the kids. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I think sometimes we forget about the fact that um, we, when, when we look at somebody who does that, we think, how could somebody do that? They're going to go to hell. And you start thinking all these hateful things. But we really have to think about the fact of they were lost. They were lost. The enemy was really at work in them for them to be able to do such a thing. And it breaks my heart to see so many people get to this mentally, emotionally unstability mind state. To do such a thing. It's like we have to pray. We have to pray. I encourage you guys to please pray for those families. And even the kids who survived. They're going to be traumatized by this. Be with. Pray that the Holy Spirit comes and be with them as well. Their parents to. You know having to explain this to their kids. That their friend died. Like it. Their teacher. Somebody they looked up to in the school. It's like how do you even. I don't think I've ever heard of such a thing happen in elementary school. Like, you hear about these things happening at college, in colleges, Virginia Tech, and in high schools. But in, in elementary school? Like, I've never heard of such a thing. It's like, we really need to pray. Um, I'm going to give you guys some scriptures. Because only the word of God... Only the word of God can bring comfort during these times. Please pray. Please pray. Um, there's so many scriptures in the Bible. I mean, seriously, that can bring comfort during this time. But I'm going to give you some ones that I think that can really help. Those who are confused, those who are suffering from this, um, yeah. John 16 verse 33 says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And this is Jesus talking here. He's not saying that. He's obviously making it clear that, yes, there are going to be a lot of trials and tribulations that are going to happen in this day and age. But Jesus came to save us so that in him, in, in those who believe in him, we'll be able to have some sanity. We'll be able to have some peace of mind. At all. Period. It's only going to happen through Christ Jesus. Here's another scripture. It's Luke 21 verse 36. It says, But stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place. And to stand before the Son of Man. Pray. Pray. Pray in faith. Pray if you're struggling with hate towards this person. Um, pray for the families who are suffering that the Holy Spirit comes and comes by their side, that they feel the presence of God with them, lifting their burdens from them, comforting them and helping them and strengthening them through this time right now. Luke 18 verses 7 through 8, it says, and will not God Give justice to his elect 
who cry to him day and night. Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. I know that uh, scripture has got to bring a lot of comfort to people who are thinking, like, what is going to happen to this person? Justice isn't going to be served. It will. God will take care of it. And that's why you have to pray. You have to pray. We don't want to sit here and go all crazy and lose our minds and go hateful. I, I don't know if his other brother is alive because he was a part of it as well. But, yeah, um... I have a few more scriptures still. This is from Psalms um, 46 verse 1. I use this in the Hurricane Sandy video as well, but, it, you know, we always could use that reminder of the scripture. No matter if we heard it before, God makes everything new. Uh, the scripture says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way. Yes, this is scary. This is absolutely scary. It's terrifying to think about. But God is our strength, is our shield. And though we're going through so much trouble, like he will not forsake us. He will be right by our side. Here's another one. And I and I really want everybody to really marinate and meditate on this scripture um it's from romans 12 verses 19 through 21 it says beloved never avenge yourselves believe it to the wrath of god for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord to the contrary if your enemy is hungry feed him if he is thirsty give him something to drink for by so doing you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Um, when stuff like this happens, it's very hard with our flesh and how we are to not have hateful thoughts. To not be like, this person's going to go to hell, you know, and think so much hateful things towards them. Um, when people do us wrong, it's so hard for us to not be bitter, not be resentful, uh, not have malice, um, which is evil thoughts in our head to hurt them. But take care because God is in control still. And he will, vengeance will be his. This person's not going to get away with what they did. They're not. God is a righteous God. God is a just God. He will take care of it. How we overcome evil. See, when you look at all the hateful stuff that goes on in the world, um, sometimes we want to blame God. We want to blame God. Not realizing the fact that we're the ones who disobey God from the beginning. We're the, we're the ones who are led by the enemy. This was not in God's plan whatsoever. Um... I'm sorry, I just lost my train of thought, like, thinking about this. Um, we think the way that we can have revenge on people is to be evil towards them back, be spiteful towards them back, hurt them back, you know, get their loved ones back for what they did to us. There is never going to be any peace with that mindset. Justice is never going to be served with that mindset. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, forgive them, Lord, for they do not know what they do. 
what sets us apart from the world and from everybody else is having a Christ-centered mind to forgive those who have done wrong to us because they are the ones who souls are lost. They're the ones who the enemy is at work within. And overcoming evil with evil is not going to help anything. But praying for them. That God brings his Holy Spirit and consumes them to change them and make them over from these ways. And forgiving them. Because when you hold that bitterness and that resentfulness... In you, it doesn't help you grow. You know, it doesn't help you grow in God. It doesn't help you. It doesn't make it better for you to be able to move forward. But when you forgive out of love for that person, despite what they did, that is when you can continually grow in God and be able to truly move forward, period. And it's something that's very hard, but it's something that we really have to pray for. That's something we really have to pray for because only God alone, His Holy Spirit, Christ within us, is what is going to make that possible. Not on our own strength whatsoever, but God. I have three more scriptures and I'm going to end this video. I'm sorry it's so long. My videos are never short anymore, but... I just want to be able to explain these scriptures for those who may not may not be believers or may be just born again and, and want understanding on what is being said here in these scriptures. Um, another one is Matthew 5.44, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Psalms 55 verse 22 says, Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. And the last scripture is Psalms 9.10. It says, The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O oh Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. He will not forsake you if you seek him. During all the chaos that is going on with you emotionally right now, mentally, spiritually, if you seek the Lord in truth and in faith, he will draw close to you. He will uphold you. He will come right by your side and be your stronghold and your shield and your protector. I love you guys. Um, God bless. I'm praying for you all who went through this, those who didn't, um, but are affected by this in some way. I'm just praying for you all, and I love you guys. And Peace and blessings to you all. Bye.